quick little video on my Mercedes 2005 uh, E500 rear wheel drive, not a 4Matic. Um, I bought this car years ago when I worked further away from work and I wanted to um, just have a nice highway cruiser. Uh, I have racked up uh, 180,000 miles on it in probably, I don't know, 15 years. Uh, these are full throttle autobound rips, man. I would run this thing flat out all the time. Well, up to the speed limiter. Speed limiter on this one's at uh, 134. I think it had S-rated tires at the time. Anyway, uh, this thing has not had an easy life, and the drivetrain has been dead nuts solid. Uh, it's been very good to me. Um, I've had weird problems. It eats regulators. Um, alternator likes to eat regulators, so I just, every now and then, rather than replacing with a junk reman re um, alternator, I just swap out the uh, regulator for 30 bucks. But this one's been in there for probably five, six years now. Uh, the other thing it eats is ball joints. Uh, I don't know what the deal is, no matter what brand you use, it just loves to eat uh, ball joints in the front end and it just rattles like crazy. And there are numerous ball joints, not just an upper and lower, but technically a tie rod end contains a ball joint, uh, as does the, uh, in the middle of one of the control arms is another smaller ball joint that is the uh, sway bar end link connector. Um, so those like to rattle. And that's what it's doing now because I've only I've only replaced it three times so it's time for it to rattle again for no freaking reason anyway uh, but today we're gonna talk about the air suspension on these cars and um, these cars are known for um, the airmatic system not being a hundred percent reliable but I think it can be um, even though mine isn't and I haven't gone about everything the right way uh, throughout the years some of it's uh, me just being lazy some of it was me just not wanting to open a can of worms well that can of worms was open long ago uh, and i had since learned a lot about this system that didn't make me less lazy though but let's look at the uh let's look at the um at the system real quick uh oh hey, hang on let's advertise oh you're already here anyway so oh yeah so this is a um yeah oh what do you do with that old dell well, it's funny because that's what the, the dealerships were given to run the uh, Mercedes software. I'm going to try my best to get the glare out of y'all. But um, there's just so sunny today, I don't think it's going to happen. So we can talk about real quick, as fast as I can, um, the multiple uh, pieces to the Mercedes uh, aromatic system. As soon as I find my pointer, there we go. We're going to zoom out with the right click, zoom in with the left click. I can't pan, so it's really annoying. So we have uh, several systems in this car, well, several components to two systems in the car. Um, so there are obviously multiple halves to this um, aromatic system. One is, of course, the electrical um, and, ele and electronic control system. So this is the um, aromatic control, uh, the aromatic computer. Uh, this sensor is, I believe, your yaw sensor course an ignition so every it seems like whenever Mercedes documents something they do a pretty good job if you can find it um, but everybody's always talking over to CAN bus so anyway um, just ignore that stuff for now what we're interested in today is all the yellow lines and yellow gold orange lines um, that make up the uh, pneumatic portion of the uh, aromatic system so I'll just talk about real quick what happened to my car everything was fine and then I noticed it was occasionally I would come out to go to work and the rear end would be sitting low it's always the rear end never the front end on these things um, and that should probably tell us something but uh, it didn't tell me anything back then and I just kept on driving it the way it was eventually it got so bad that the compressor had to run you know it was getting worked a little too much uh, the compressor is located in the left front of the car uh, we will use uh, international friendly terms so in the left front of the car uh, we have a aromatic compressor um, it is actually just a Wabco compressor there's pretty much from what I've seen on different uh, air ride cars that I've worked on no matter the brand they either use this compressor or they use whatever's on GM's and Nissan's <laughs> so those tend to use that style compressor and I've seen this Wabco on RVs and eh, just all trucks um, it is a dry compressor. It has a some type of composite piston ring, which you can buy on eBay and rebuild your compressor if, it, if it's not pumping as fast as it was. Um, but if you do only the ring, 
uh, in this, the cylinders ovaled over time, so that doesn't really get you to where it was. Now, the, I did recently see in the last, I don't know, several years now, they are selling um, upper cylinder kits um, with a ring, much like you would buy a, you know, a cylinder kit for your two-stroke dirt bike ripper. Um, anyway, that's the compressor. All it does is turn on and compress. It does have, uh, this one does have a valve on it, so um, in case any air wants to come back out through their way um, from the rest of the system, it doesn't just blow right through the compressor. There is a, a solenoid on there that can be activated by the computer to turn that off. All right. So <clears throat> out of the compressor, we go into a, because uh, I can't remember the name. It's a very common name. People replace this block all the time. It's just basically a distribution block of sorts. There is a, a solenoid on there and some valves. Um, that just, as the compressor running, this valve is going to be activated and uh, it's going to send. Uh, initially, what it does is it needs to fill the reservoir. The reservoir is in the right rear of the car. Uh, it's this tank. It looks like a little beer keg. There's no beer in it, it just has air most of the time. Um, I did mean to put a nipple on there and use it for a couple things. One, this compressor is more than capable of pumping up your tires. Two, I want to run air horns because I like to blow my horn when people are doing stupid stuff. So um, I just haven't done it. That would be a cool thing to do, just add an air horn to that tank. Uh, so there are pressure sensors everywhere. Uh, we have pressure sensors in each of the air springs on the front. The air spring slash strut are combination. You can't replace one or the other. You have to buy them all as a unit. In the back, the air spring and the strut are separate units. Um, although I've replaced all this stuff at some point. I right, gotta resume the video. Uh, I ran out of space. Anyway, uh, I, has, I was just saying, what, it, what had happened to my car? Uh, a few things happened and uh, I wasn't educated at the time. Um, but this orange tank here, there's two orange tanks which are additional reservoirs. Uh, for the rear rear air springs there are two valves in here one is a fill valve that opens to fill um, both of these uh, reservoirs up as one because um, there's another valve that disconnects essentially this reservoir from the air spring uh, when it is open you have more volume uh, which gives it a more controlled easy ride in addition to the computer controlling the harshness of the spruts front and back there are also accelerometers here uh, here and here uh, where the car can detect you know what's going on it's hitting bumps did I handle that good or the bump he hits a hard bump in the front it could warn the rear before the rear hits that bump and how to absorb that um, bump that's coming um, uh, the other thing it does is uh, it can turn off that uh, air volume to, to basically increase the spring rate uh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty ingenious. The problem is this is aluminum tank, rubber lined plastic. That's no problem there, but I live in Ohio and we get salt. Aluminum doesn't rust. Yes, it does. It will corrode. And what has happened over the years is uh, some salt and crap got up um, on the aluminum nipple coming off of, I call this, I can't zoom, I call this a pillow tank. Um, and I have these pinholes in the nipple uh, on these tanks and that had caused my my car to link leak over the years and uh, okay Well, that's no big problem. Yeah, you prematurely prematurely wore out the pump, but is that all that happened? No, when the car keeps sitting down all the way eventually killed the air springs um, because they were getting pinched and ripped So I've had to replace the air springs are not makes um, They're probably one of the most popular replacements air springs for these cars But their springs do not have a nipple for this additional reservoir. I don't know if they've documented that these leak. Uh, I don't see anybody talking about that. I just see people replacing rear air, air springs. And yes, I have had the original one actually blew out the side on me. Um, but I've never seen anybody address the leaking nipples. Also, these tanks leak as a joke. <laughs> anyway, let's look at the air spring real quick. So here's the spring I just took out. It was uh, on the left side of the car. And um, it uh, was cockeyed in there from uh, the other side leaking over time and it kicked this one out and stretched it and it's all kind of, it's hard to, yeah, maybe it's not hard to see, but you can see how it kind of, it's got scoliosis. Um, but this spring is not old, um, pretty simple. Like I said, you can squeeze it, you hear the air coming out of there because that valve is, uh, there's a three pin connector here. So this valve is open by default. This is a Wapco compressor that came off the car. It's actually not bad. It was replaced, um, but it's it's not bad. Uh, this is the air cylinder I was talking about. Uh, this is the air goes to the air filter. 
for the air, uh, the suck side, and then this is the, the blow side. Um, and that blows into the distribution block. We'll look at that in a second. This is another air spring that I had on the car at one time. It is also bad. I think I have a rip up inside um, on top of here, but um, I hung on to it for some reason. Maybe it's not bad, I don't remember. Uh, let's look at the air block real quick. <clears throat> so this is the distribution block. You have a line that goes to the back, that goes to a T, that feel, uh, the T is then teed off to the two rear air springs, I think. One of, well, one of these goes off to the air tank in the back, and one goes to the left front strut, and one goes to the right front strut. Uh, this one goes to the compressor, so this is the, the feed line from the compressor. And there's a couple cylinders on here, like I said, to control where it wants to switch and send the air. One of the other issues I had with this car was leaking air lines that were impossible to find. I had two ripped back here. I don't know, I can't see my screen. So these are just Amazon couplings for now. I do have a new airline, but I just threw them on there. They just literally wore through, um, and you would have never found that, but I happened to have pretty good ears, and it was quiet one day, and I heard a tss, and I yanked off the uh, liner and found two leaks. And you can see this hose has been rubbing um, on the body, and after 15 years, it's gonna wear through. This one is not leaking yet, but this one was leaking. So in addition to those over there, this one over here had uh, rubbed through on this edge here uh, and was leaking. So I had the leaks galore and it's pretty frustrating when you're trying to diagnose this car because you're like, okay, I replaced the spring but the damn thing still leaks. Why? I got a new spring or, and it was leaking. It had a hole in it. It had a hole in it because it got pinched because it was leaking somewhere else, pinched it, ripped it um, or wore out or one of these other lines leaked. So. I guess here's the lesson here's my advice if you own an aromatic car one if you're going to replace the air springs make sure these pillow tanks are not leaking they are very difficult to get out this air springs i can have those out in like five ten minutes you do not have to take the carrier down or anything there's a rear control arm that uh, has an allen 10 mil allen bolt i literally just take that out swing that down out of the way and then there's one long bolt that pins the uh, bottom of the air spring to the control arm the top of the um, control arm is just, or I'm uh, sorry, the top of the uh, air spring is just pinned to the um, to the body. There's literally just a plastic pin. Uh, so one bolt, technically, and you can swing the air spring to the rear of the car while you're holding down. Um, I guess maybe it's a thrust arm. Holding that down, and uh, you can swing the air spring right out. I've done it, obviously, more than a few times, so I'm an old hat. But uh, your first time, it might be a little more difficult. But I would just make sure that these tanks are not leaking. If you get the R-Not springs, then you don't have to worry about those tanks. But if you get the cheaper springs, then you do need to worry about the tanks. Um, because they may, yeah, you may find a hole in your, in your spring. But that doesn't mean you don't have the holes here, or you don't have the hole here, or you don't have the hole there. You know, and it's pretty frustrating to, uh, to put, you know, a few hundred dollars worth of parts in a car, not fix it. And then I end up ruining a spring anyway, because it still leaked and pinched the spring. So, um, like I said, my advice would be make sure all your lines are good to go. If your compressor is bad, it's not going to cause the car to sag, except, um, if you're driving the car, it's running the compressor, it thinks it has air and it opens the valve and then the air can leak back. But that usually wouldn't happen because it knows not to open the valve if, um, if there's no pressure in the reservoir. Um, sometimes it might think that it, it can, well, the compressor when it's in good shape can keep up with no air. It'll lift the car right up. But um, in any case, these compressors are fairly cheap now. They're under $200 these days, um, maybe even cheaper. Rebuild kit was like 30 bucks. Um, pneumatic line is, I think it's four millimeter line, but I use thick wall. Got it from Amazon, um, bought orange, so I can remember which one I replaced. Um, I didn't replace them all the way yet, but I'm going to. But right now, today's task is to fix this pillow tank leak. Let's look at that tank. See if we can see it up under here. Oh, I didn't bring my flashlight with me, but that is the tank here. And that is the nipple coming off the tank. Um, that line is a molded line, but it looks like a, maybe a 5 8 line. Maybe 3 quarter, probably bigger, yeah. Anyway, um, but it's molded. Um, I don't think my rubber line's leaking. It's got a pretty good sheathing on it to protect it from rubbing on the body. Uh, but that nipple is definitely leaking, so I'm gonna have to take this tank out. Now, they also said you have to drop everything to take the tank out. 
um, that's not true either. I can get the tank out of there just as it is. I've done this one before, which is why I got to do it again because I didn't put a new one on it. I think I JB welded it. And it's still leaking. So we're going to JB weld it some more. Um, or I'm going to take it to the farm and dig it up and uh, fix it permanently. Uh, but that's it. That's the Mercedes uh, aromatic system. And I didn't go over the cool features of the aromatic system. It's not just a nice ride. Um, it has, with the accelerometers and with the electronically controlled dampening on each corner, um, and with the yaw sensor, uh, it's a pretty ingenious system. Um, if you're going down the road, you want to, you know, make a hard turn left or right, um, and you jerk on that steering wheel, steering angle sensor is going to tell everybody what's going on. He says, oh my god, this guy, I'm doing 60 miles an hour, he just jerked the wheel. Um, I'm going to lock this left um, or right front because I'm turning left hard I'm gonna lock this right front um, strut hard to keep the car from rolling and, and turn you know make it feel like a kind of like a Porsche right pretty pretty darn close but uh, no it's pretty cool because you have a uh, just just turning quickly can make this aromatic uh, suspension the entire system um, get sporty or get comfort uh, dynamically and I think that's a pretty neat system I really enjoyed it when it's working it's pretty cool. Um, there is an air lift button in the car, so it's like a it's like an Audi off road. You hit the air button and bzzz, Audi probably uses that same compressor, uh, but it lifts up and um, gives you some good clearance. Um, I, I don't use it that much uh, at all because I really don't need the clearance unless it's deep in the snow. Uh, that's the only time I've really had to use it, um, or just to clear some kind of obstacle. Of course, maybe a a dead cow on the road or something who knows but uh, anyway uh, that is the Mercedes aromatic system according to Ben and um, I'm speaking from just experience and not any real you know technician training or anything it's I, I have the tools here I have the experience with the car um, just look out those leaks will get you every time if you keep letting it leak you're gonna eventually kill the, the air springs in the bag they're gonna rip so um, they don't like to be deflated all the time. They get pinched and, the, and then they're done. So fix your air leaks, kids. And uh, don't be like Ben, because I'm on the third set. All right, hope you enjoyed my Mercedes tech talk on the Aromatic system by Mercedes. Good day.